Good morning, My name is everybody. Kurt Hagman, is Kurt I'm the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors for San Bernardino County, and I want to thank you all for joining us. With me here, we have our Sheriff, John McMahon. For questions later, we have representatives from Public Health and my Vice Chair, Josie Gonzalez. Um, and we just want to kind of give you an update where we are today at this time. And the three things we're going to hear about today are where we stand today, what's open, what's not. Our multi-county asked the governor for more local control and the launch of our San Bernardino County COVID business compliance website, all exciting stuff. But let me first start off with, we've heard you loud and clear. We are pushing as many things open in this county. We want to get you back to work, back to doing the fun things that we want to do as quickly as we can, but keeping as safe as we can as well. And that's important for all of us to remember. We got to this position to date by all of us following the three basic things of our physical distance, wearing our mask, and using good hygiene and washing those germs off our hands all the time. So I want to thank everybody for doing that. And I believe, um, Sheriff, today is the Police Memorial Day as well. So I want to open in, um, in a moment of silence for all those fallen officers who have done so much for us in public safety for all these years. And we want to thank all our public safety for their frontline services on a daily basis, keeping us safe. So thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. We're gonna start off um, with last week, what we did is we started off with early phase two. That was opening up new retail. So our stay at home order is weakening. We want you to stay at home if you don't have to go out, but we gave you some more options to get outside and that is to open up a retail stores for curbside delivery and curbside pickup. So that was a good plus under the governor's order. Um, we also opened up different outdoor activities you could do at the same time but also the manufacturing and transportation of those, those goods to get to the retail outlets. So the stores are starting to open little by little, um, not as fast as we would like to on the county, but we also want to make sure we do it safely. And this week, the governor allowed more things to become open as well. Healthcare services, preventive care, such as dental, and other pre preventive care services. Um, other customer service things that we like to use that are not customer contact, like getting our car washed or mowing our yards, the gardener service, dog walking, pet grooming. I know my dogs are very stinky by now and they definitely are going for a bath now um, and getting their haircuts. Um, plumbing, janitorial services, those type of things where it's not a one-on-one -on -one interface, but we really need to open up our lives. Child care, as we open up more of the economy, people have to go back to work, so child care is going to be opened up. Offices, and we're still encouraging telecommuting when you can, but if you work in an office building, we go back to work now as well. Trade schools for essential services. We need to get to start training our new workforce, such as nurses and other things like that going forward. Short-term rentals and campgrounds. So, But you can't have those big group parties like we used to. It's going to be your own family and your own campsite, keeping to yourself. Um, but we're at least allowing some more of those activities coming out. We have guidelines to do the safety on our web website. In fact, um, we have a multi-page document that we're sharing with the governor. Um, our county reopening plan that covers pretty much everything. So if your business is not open yet, we want you to take a look at this on our website. It has a checklist, what is gonna be there um, to make your business safe for your residents to go into and for our, uh, your customers to use your services and it's a very pragmatic approach. And I gotta stop here and say thank you to all our team, our staff, for putting this together. I know they're working nights and weekends, putting this big plan together to make sure it got out. And we're submitting that um, to the state government, to the governor, saying we're ready here in San Bernardino County to open. Because we believe that every business is an essential business in San Bernardino County. And we wanna fight for all our services to be open as quickly as we can in a very safe manner. And so we set guidelines for all this that's out there today. Um, so we have several other things done. We actually made this really nice um, web website sheet that you can see and we posted it on our social media that lists the, build, the, build, yeah, the businesses that are open today and those that are not yet open. Um, it doesn't list every business out there, but I think you can see the trend of where um, we're going as a state and where we're going as a county. And it's very important that we get that information out to our residents, to our business owners, and for those who are not open, you can start to see what's gonna be required of you to open in the near future, hopefully, and what those guidelines are. That's part of our, our front here to bring local control from the state to the county as well. Um, we did 
I think we're the only county that has all of our cities united with the County of San Bernardino, signed by the mayors. We sent a letter to the governor last Friday um, requesting to have more local control, saying that, hey, we have this plan already. We've been doing things safely. We flattened our curve. We did all these different things. Let us go forward on local region by region basis in San Bernardino County and open up more things. Um, so we sent a letter signed by all 24 city mayors, which was, I think, a great testament to our being a team effort here in San Bernardino County, as well as um, just a few days ago, a couple days ago, we sent one signed by four counties, including San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange County, and San Diego, to also say, hey, Governor, we represent 25% of the population in California. We have our plans ready. San Bernardino is different than Riverside, is different than Orange County. We have different areas within San Bernardino County that's different. The high desert is different than the mountains, it's different than the valley. Give us that local control to make smart decisions to allow us to open the economy in a very pragmatic, safe way for our residents. So that letter also went out to the governor um, just recently. So we have our signed letter for all our, our mayors, and then one for all the chairmen for the four counties who went to the governor, along with our plan to reopen. Now, one unique thing about San Bernardino County is we want to come out and be a partner of our business to open up safely. And I think that's a very good distinction from any other places that I've talked to so far. I don't do this. Instead of just having the regulations and using the stick or a fine for something to try to um, enforce it on business, we came out with a COVID compliant business campaign. And I'm very excited about that. The board voted to put $30 million behind to help small business, those with 100 employees or less, to come out and apply to get a COVID compliant certification from the county that will allow them to, for our, their customers and for the residents to know that they're taking their steps needed to keep us safe when we go into that store or service. That's for both essential businesses that are open today, those we just opened recently, and those gonna be open in the future. They say that we have checked and they're following all the strict protocols to keep us safe when we go use those services. And that's been, a, uh, I think, a huge success. I forgot the number. I think it's 35 or 2,700 applications as of one day yesterday when it opened live. And that's tied into our website right now, and I'm sure they're getting more today. Already 700 businesses have applied to get this compliance certificate, and we are giving those businesses a $2,500 check as well to be our partner to open up safely so our, our county residents are protected going forward. So that is live as of yesterday at 10 o'clock, and we're hoping that more and more the businesses will look on our website, see what they need to become COVID compliant, send their application in so we can help them with this $2,500 check to become um, COVID compliant and to keep our residents safe. We think that's a much better way to go than trying to be the, the stick and making sure, hey, we caught something wrong with you. No, this is a way to incentivize them to do the right thing, and it gives our residents a peace of mind and confidence when they go into that store that their, their store workers are protected and we are protected as a customer to go in. So that's a, a great program. Again, kudos to the team to put that together, our, our ISD team for the technology behind it. And what's gonna be really great about this later is we're using the Esri platform with this um, application process. So eventually we'll have maps on the website. So if you live in a particular neighborhood, you wanna see what's open, you're gonna be able to see it geographically on a map that they have been certified, they're, they're a great place to go shop and what's close to you. So that's coming forward um, in the future. We're very much looking forward to that, um, those more data points. And our goal here in the county is to make sure that you're informed as residents, that we are communicating with our businesses and our workers, workforce, and we're all doing this as a team effort because together we are SB Strong. We are gonna tackle this, our new, normal here in the county going forward with these new protocols will keep us safe and keep our family safe, our neighbors safe, as well as be able to open up parts of the economy um, little by little. And we're gonna ask for more and more with the governor and more of that local control going forward. But we're really looking forward to doing these things together and we have the plan in place. And that's why I brought all these papers up today to show our residents that um, we have that plan in place and we're submitting that through there. And with that, we have um, our sheriff here, public health here, my vice chair here, if there's any questions or for myself. Um, we wanna thank you for attending our press conference today. And I don't know, David, do you have any questions or? Um, just wanna, you know, based on what I've read, Jacob says, along the county saying, okay, okay, once we do this, I mean, it sounds to me like the, the 
traditional devices are in general kind of trying to go for the most part public space right now. Yeah, absolutely. Because we've had the essential businesses open for a long period of time now, since day one. Our grocery stores, the targets, those type of things that the governor uh, gave us the opening for that earlier. So what is the criteria for business to be open, both for the ones that are open going forward? That's why we put together this 60-page um, plan of sp specific criteria for each type of business. And a lot of things we see already in our stores. You have the physical barrier between the checkout clerk and the customer. You have the X's on the ground to keep the physical distance when you're standing in line. Um, we'll have, hopefully, sanitation stations so people can use hand sanitizer when they come in, especially if you're touching product. Those are the really pragmatic measures that our staff has looked at best practices and worked with our business coalition, um, as well as other sources throughout the, the state and the nation to find out what's the best practical methods to put together. So that plan is gonna be online, so the businesses that are able to be open today and those who are preparing to open in the future can look at that criteria and prepare their business to be safe and COVID compliant going forward. Kind of specification makes me think that you're look, you're looking at this as a long term security issue for for cut people to feel like they can be safe even six months a year out from here. I think that's very important. So thank you for that. Um, I do believe, unfortunately, this is a long term. This is our new norm now. We talked about in the board last Tuesday that we have responded as a county, as a government, to a emergency crisis like we would a fire or earthquake. But now we need to transition to what's gonna keep us ready to go until we get that cure, until we get that vaccination going. When that's six months, nine months, or a year, we have to get people back into their, their new normal lives with protections, with the confidence that when they go into the store, they're not gonna walk home sick one day. And so while we're building our infrastructure up to handle, hopefully never use, peaks of this disease, especially in later months when the flu season come back around, we're still ramping those things up. We're still you know, stockpiling supplies and ventilators and making sure we have beds available to treat our residents if they need treatment. But the, really the best treatment at all is prevent them from getting sick in the first place. So if we do our part as residents by watching those three things of wearing our mask, physical distance, washing our hands, and we work with our business community and the things that we as residents are gonna start doing our daily lives again to be prepared and keep their workforce safe and to keep um, their establishment safe, that's the best prevention we could do. And the more we put in prevention, and but still have the freedom to do what we want to do here, the less response we have to do later. Quick question also about um, the testing status, what's going, what's happening going forward, and about the kinds of testing that are, will be or are available, you know, as opposed to antibody testing and regular. Uh... I know we're both using both antibody and the blood tests right now at several locations, but Corwin, you want to come up and talk a little more about the plans and, and where we're going in the future here for testing, which I know you made some, you're gonna be an announcement on Monday, right? Your first stop. Thank you, Chairman. So testing obviously is a, a major priority for our county. So we continue to look at plans to expand access and more uh, regular access at the same time to all of our residents within the county. We have lifted at a number of our events requirements for symptoms. So folks generally now can become or come to these events and be tested. But we continue to look for efficiencies and how we can continue to expand. It is an ongoing effort where we're looking for the long haul. And so we're putting plans into place to be able to continue this effort for the next many months to come to continue to offer testing, both the PCR which will tell you if you have the active virus or serology, which you also asked about. Um, that is also being offered at a, ver a variety of sites throughout the county. In our community testing sites, um, just due to capacity and the ability to run both tests simultaneously, we've started out just at the smaller events to offer serology. But we continue to make plans to expand that as well. How, how do folks uh, um, get access to the kinds of testing? Do they request it? All right, so access to testing is actually available through multiple fronts at this point in time. On our county COVID-19 website, we list a lot of the facilities that people can access. So depending on the type of insurance they have or lack of insurance, they can go to certain 
facilities that are open pretty much every day. And for general community testing, we list those sites as well. And if they go into our website and watch that, we actually open up uh, a registration period where people can go in and make appointments to get tested. And so I highly recommend that everybody access our website and take advantage of the opportunities to be tested that are advertised there. And it's updated pretty much daily. Thank you. Thank you, Corin. Thank you very much for all your, your attendance and questions, and we'll look forward to keeping you informed. <laughs>